up to the foramen, midline sagittal, pre-contrast, post-contrast. So what's your most likely diagnosis? Neurofibroma, schwannoma, disc herniation, epidural abscess, or pseudomeningocele? No couch to jump up on. And the answer, excellent. Schwannoma, 70%, uh, and kind of a little mixture. You know, typical dumbbell lesion within the neural foramen, extending in both an intradural and an extradural component. Uh, disc herniation, no, or not something that big, you know, doesn't really look like a herniation. We don't like that. Abscess, you know, I guess it could be from the enhancing component, but the T2 with bony expansion, as you saw, particularly in the sagittal T2, been there for a long time. It's repo modeled the neural foramen, not really one. Pseudomeningocele, wrong signal characteristics completely on that, should be CSF. So there's the schwannoma, typical dumbbell pattern, as you saw on that. And that needs to be contrasted to what a neurofibroma would look like. Somewhere along the line, you may be asked a question about target lesions with neurofibromas, and this is what a target lesion looks like. Sometimes you can be a little bit more specific on the histology, schwannoma versus neurofibroma. They can have these concentric areas within them in the neurofibromas. You can also see it on the T2. And the patients who have NF1, of course, you've got to look at multiple levels in the parasagittal. They can have these lesions at every level as they march down the spine. Sometimes you can also be helpful to look on the axial, and while you might not in any one level say schwannoma versus neurofibroma, when you see it come out and then infiltrate and then here going out the dorsal ramus, you know, that's not going to be a schwannoma. That's something else. That's in the neurofibroma category, that whole transformation of that nerve. And then you go to the opposite side. You see it, you know, multiple levels as you go down. So that's neurofibroma versus schwannoma. And again, these patients, as they transform you know, their whole bodies into neurofibromas, you see multiple signal changes here. I wanted to point out that there can be a lot of variability in enhancement, particularly with neurofibromas, that we see some of this segment that doesn't really enhance much at all. Other areas that enhance uh, considerably, but that really doesn't have much prognostic significance for malignant transformation. It's really a matter of clinical symptomatology, growth, new pain production. Uh, but you don't be surprised if it's a neurofibroma and it really doesn't have much in the way of enhancement. Now, running down a little bit of a rabbit hole, we're still sort of in that same case, but I wanted to ask you this. Uh, here's another case, uh, unenhanced T1, post-contrast, sagittal and axial. What do you think about this? What's the least likely diagnosis on this case? Is it unlikely to be an epidermoid, cystocercosis, schwannoma, astrocytoma, or hemangioblastoma? One, two, three, four, five, six. They're really saying Hassenfeld. What are they saying at the end? So we're going to call number four, which is astrocytoma, which is good because, again, these cases, that's not the correct answer, but these cases uh, are supposed to be discriminators. And, again, I think on the spine section, since we you know, don't, can't go that deep in pathology, what we try to do is confuse you because and see what the spaces are. Because So you really look hard for those cases where you just can't tell what space it's in because you don't really, again, you know, know three things within each of those three spaces. You only have to know nine things. So if we can confuse you with the space, that's the key. Here is a lesion that you really have to decide, well, I think it's, it's I know it's intradural, but now am I intramedullary or am I intradural extramedullary? And you may just not be able to tell. Uh, this is a cystic schwannoma. I think it's reasonable to have anything that might be intramedullary with an exophytic component or intradural extra, I mean, all those are reasonable choices. So hemangioblastoma, you can have cystic and solid components with hemangioblastoma, I think that's reasonable. Astrocytoma, you can have exophytic component, it's kind of an odd look, but they can be cystic and exophytic. Schwannoma, that's what it was. Cystocercosis, sure, you can have cyst enhancing component nodules. I think the least likely, and maybe you can get me in a headlock and you know, wrestle me down later on if you don't agree, but epidermoid, I think, unlikely in this case, mainly because of the enhancement pattern, and you'd have to say, well, you know, maybe it was infected, something else complicated. Um, but I'm going to stick with that and say epidermoid is going to be the least likely. So let's talk a little bit about NF1. You knew this was coming. There had to be questions about this. Um, what are true concerning NF1 and neurofibromas except it's a protein product of NF1 gene neurofibromin, the NF1 locus maps to chromosome 7. It's autosomal dominant. Penetrance is close to 100% by 10 years. Or the positive family history in 50%, which is not correct. Computers are serious too, Michael. The answer 
that you said was incorrect is NF1 locus maps to chromosome 7, so that's very good. You did very well on that one. So it should be 17. Um, you know, again, the von Recklenhausen 17 letters, seven maps to 17, that's always the good one to, to go with. The rest are true. Uh, neurofibromin is the gene product. Now, I could go through, I know Dr. Nadich talked a lot about this. You know, this is fine again, so all you have to remember is tumor suppressor gene. When in doubt, for all these things, you know, NF1, NF2, just say tumor suppressor, you'll be fine in that. Next case, 49-year-old back pain, fatigue,